So just when you thought that Jen from Basketball Wives was holding the crown for the fiercest drink taken to the face, introducing Stacy. Guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Baller Wives episode one. No, I'm sorry, season one, episode two. Chyna got discombobulated, and like I said, Jen was really holding the crown for the girl who got the drink in the face. But there's a new drink face taker in town. And her name is Stacy. Let's talk about this. <laughs> anyway, so we go right back to the party where we were last week when I left off. Because y'all know I was two through when I left off with this. When, you know, Kiafa standing there and that dog on Stacy is carrying on terrible. Tell and and she made that comment about uh, Kiafa's mom when she said something about Kiafa's mom and Kiafa said my mother's dead and she said good I was just done I couldn't even get myself together after that I had to be done and we start right back in at that that scene she's still going on and on and on and then she starts going around the table and telling people you wish you had a, you know a husband like mine and you wish you had a husband like mine well, baby, she made one mistake when well, she got around the table and told Carmina that she wished she had a Chris. Baby, Carmina gave her her drink, and I said, girl, what was she drinking out of a pitcher? She said, whoo, shot it real quick and real fast. And when I tell you, the drink, there was not a drop of the drink that Stacy didn't receive. Her whole, her whole, her face was wet, her hair was wet, and she's like, I said, oh, she got you, she got you, honey. She splashed the crap out of her, too, honey. Did not miss a drop, not a drop hit the floor. It was all on her head, I said. Oh. And she tried to throw her drink back on her. She got her good. Do you hear me? Good. And it was a mess, and that's when they, they it broke out. She was selling all these wolf tickets. Girl, you're pregnant as can be. Oh, yeah, I still live across the street from Kioff. I still live over there, Carmina. I'm going to get you. And then she's threatening, you know, Kioff and carrying on. Geneva was tickled. Geneva was like, what? Oh, my God. She was so tickled. She's sitting over there. And you, now, see, I got a cousin that acts just like Mika. Miko. Where was Mika? She ain't getting no liquor on her. Because she wasn't that close to the action. She got it all started, but she wasn't that close to the action. She messy. Messy. Do you hear me? And I'm going to talk about it some more as we go on to, into this episode. That Miko is ridiculous. Anyway, so they went through all that, separated out. They're leaving. And so you got Miko, you got Stacy, and also, uh, what's the other little friend of theirs? Crystal. They got all this to say. They bumping their gums. They in the car leaving. And when she got, when they got to the thing with the, about her mother and that stuff, well, did you know that, Chris, did you know her mother was dead? No, I didn't know her mother was dead. But then she didn't take it back. And she wasn't remorseful about what she said at all. At all. She was still being rude about it. So I was like, girl, listen, I don't feel bad for you. I don't feel bad that your flat iron dude ain't flat iron no more. And you, Sitting over there looking like you got, like you sticky. Because that drink, you took it all. You took it all. And I'm sure it's not the first time you've been left sticky. Moving on. Kiafa was upset. 
You know, that was the end of the party because Kiava was very upset and very upset with Carmina. She's like, I cannot believe that of all people, you're the one that threw the drink. She's like, now, you know, we hold ourselves to a different standard than that, um, Carmina. And I was like, child, hush, Kiafa. It was what it was. She had your back. She came to your rescue. You were being done. And she went on and took it up. And she told her, she said, you know what? I just couldn't do it. Once I sat there, she said what she said about your mother. I couldn't do no more from her. She said, because I sat with you and I watched for two weeks as your mother died. And I watched your mother take her last breath. So when she got around and she was still talking, I just gave her that drink. And I was like, <laughs> I was here for it. I'm sorry. I'm messy, I guess. But it was funny. So Stacy is taking Jen's crown. She get, she got the drink. Jen got an uppercut. Stacy got it full frontal and over the head, over top of the head, honey. It was fierce. I said, good evening. Next thing we see, Kiafa says, you know, she says, I was save, saving this night. It was supposed to be special so I can tell y'all that I'm actually pregnant. And they're like, oh, my God. So they were like, oh, good. So that, that changed the mood. Everybody was kind of happy. But then we get to see. After that, the key offer actually is going to be uh, it's a, a high risk pregnancy. She has had previous complications, and when she had her because her last baby I think is nine, and she was told that she probably wouldn't get pregnant, but she really didn't need to get pregnant again because it could be very damaging. It's going to be high risk, and so this is what she's actually dealing with right now. And we're talking nine years later. It's a high risk uh, pregnancy and they don't know whether she's going to get hurt or the baby's going to get hurt or the both of them. You know what I mean? So it's really some issues going on with that. So we found that out. In the midst of all that, there was a surprise birthday shower thrown for, thrown for Stacy by Miko. And it was just further perpetuated how nasty of an individual and self centered and unlikable that Stacy is. Stacy was just fussing. She didn't want a baby shower, so Miko snuck and gave it anyway. Um, Crystal basically is Stacy's best friend. Um, Stacy went on and on in her confessional, and then she even went on telling the women how she didn't want a baby shower because she thinks baby showers are poor. And this, that thing, and the other. But then once she was there, and it was a surprise. It was all about her. She was down with, oh, is this my stroller? And this, that thing, and the other. On, on, on. Then she was rude. Now, um, Kavita is another friend of theirs. She actually brought these uh, energy stones. It was as a gift. They were really pretty. But they're supposed to change the energy in a place. So you want to, you know, present them to the family members and present them around the house where the baby's going to be and it's supposed to actually, you know, change the energy. Honey, that Stacy said, ain't nothing wrong with my energy. She had brought me a box of rocks as a gift. That's a mess. I told you, she's just really, she's nasty. She is nasty and she don't make no sense. She's something else. She is really a piece of work. Filthy and nasty and rude and didn't deserve to have no party thrown for her at all. She didn't even appreciate it. She's just ignorant. But anyway, like I said, not likable. Okay, so then we met another friend of Key Office. Her name is Emily Lugo. Emily is a former video vixen. She's actually dated several different uh, ballers. Um, she basically right now has a baby that is young. It's a young, it's a small child, a toddler, that is being denied by the daddy. Um, and it just happens to be Crystal, Crystal's husband. So there's a beef between her and Crystal. Um, he was actually not committed to, basically, Emily. He ended up bringing Crystal in, and he chose Crystal over Emily. So there's a beef back and forth with Crystal and Emily. So there was this little yacht party. They uh, had this little yacht party. And they get on the bus. And as soon as I'm on the yacht, as soon as they get on the yacht, the first thing that happens is Emily and Crystal get at it. And basically, 
Emily saying, you know, you're you're running around denouncing my child, talking smack about my child. Don't do it. You know, she's like, I never said nothing about your child. I don't know your child. I don't know nothing about your situation. I didn't even know you existed. The man brought me in. It is what it is. And it, it just is what it is. So they basically were like, well, let's try to squash this because this is just ridiculous. So they basically tried to squash it, but you could tell they kind of not going to be first. But they did get it quieted down and they squashed it a little bit. Now we, we're talking about Asia. Asia and Miko got a whole issue. And the biggest issue is, it's really Miko has an issue with Asia's husband. So she takes it out on Asia. And then her son, her son Aiden and Asia's son, go to their kindergarten together. They're five and six years old. So they um, <laughs> go to kindergarten together. So Asia was like, well, you know, they, they got to that while they were on the yacht, that there's an issue, there's some tension between uh, Asia and Miko. And they said, well, let's go out on the deck and let's try to hash it out. No problem. So it really boils down to the fact that Miko used to work at the radio, at the, the television station or whatever it is, or radio station, I think it's a radio station, that Asia's husband works at, okay? And Miko got fired. And Asia's husband basically had no problem saying, well, she's not really that good at what she does, and that's why she got fired. But other than that, it's, that's it. And then he kind of, and this has happened like, I think it's like, eight or nine months ago. Hey, he's really over. You know, men do things and say things and they be over it. She's still harping on it. Okay. So now she's going to make Asia pay. And I'm sort of, I don't really have no issue with you. I just don't like your husband. And then my son don't like your son. And she's like, well, you know what I'm not going to do? I ain't going to sit out here and you talk about my son. Now, we're not going to do that. You're not going to bring my kid into it and all of that. We're not doing that. And, you know, Miko just wasn't letting it go. And then at this time, I'm looking at her and you're starting to see how petty and how raggedy that Miko really is. She really was going into this whole thing about the two little boys and talking about, you know, my, um, she said, well, you know, my son don't even have a problem with your son. You know, he talks about them all the time and says that they're friends. And honey, Miko was like, they're not friends. Honey, my son told me he beat your son up twice. She's like, I, I told you, girl, you really barking up the wrong tree. You're barking up the wrong tree, and you're going to get to the top real fast. You better quit playing. And she's like, um, she ended up actually telling her, you know, that, yeah, because my son knows all about the beef between you and me and that I don't like your husband. And she's like, well, why does your son even know that? She said, my son don't know anything like that because that's none of my son's business. My son is five. And he don't know nothing about what you're talking about. So if you got that going on at your house, that's really sad that that's how you're parenting and you're putting all of this garbage on your son. And then your son is obviously at school trying to misuse my child because he's hearing bad things about my child and his family coming from you, which is sad. And that's not good parenting. She said, and then, you know, let them kids be kids. She said, that just is not right. And she said, and again, she said, well, girl, you need to get in touch with what's going on. Because my son told me that your son be in time out all the time. And that the other. She's like, I've never heard of such. Well, that's where your parenting is wrong because you should be paying attention to that. That Miko is lying. She lying. Now, I worked in the school and I got two small. Well, my kids ain't small no more. They 10 and 14 now. But any kid in kindergarten that's being put in time out, your, your, the parents know about that. And if not... That's a piss poor school y'all got y'all kids in. And you tell me they the only two black children in the class. Ain't neither one of the little black children in the class being in timeout every day or every other day or once a month. And the parent don't know about it in an all white school. So I'm not believing that, Miko. You're messy and you're a liar. You're a liar and you're trying to teach your son to be messy. And then when we seen the little cutie, he was totally saying something totally different. When she sat and talked to her little first of all, our little boy is too grown. He is just too grown. He told her, she, they was doing something, she playing tennis or whatever. And he said, I hit about 10 balls over that net, net, net. She going to say, no, it was more like four. He going to say, you're really a hater, aren't you? Six years old. I said, oh, okay. 
All right. He's real grown, cute as a button, though. And when she talked, she sat him down. And she's talking to him like she's talking to some grown man. And telling him how he don't like, she don't like Asia. And she don't want to be Asia's friend. And she don't like Asia's husband. And he said, well, what you need to do is try to ignore, the little boy told her. Little boy got more sense than her. You need to try to ignore the bad stuff. Take on the good stuff. Be friends with her. Because me and her son, we want to be friends. I want to be friends with him. He likes the little boy. He likes the little boy. And he gave his mammy some advice. He got better sense than his mammy did. The little boy ain't he too grown, but he's very likable because he's just a little doll baby. And he was just, just as likable as he could be. Very knowledgeable. Too knowledgeable. Too grown. And that ain't his fault. His mammy done done that. And the daddy, I seen the daddy, child, later on in the program, we found out Aja, Asia, Aja, Asia. She actually is like a real estate agent. There's a $7.5 million house that she actually did an open house on. And this is was, was the last thing they brought them all in. And, uh, you know, she said, you know, that uh, she wasn't going to really rock the boat too much with... Um, Miko, because Miko knows a lot of people. So she don't want to get no riff started because she don't want to mess up her money. Because this, if she sells this house, that could make her whole year. So they get all that going on. She had already told her husband Channing, you know, we're just going to keep it cute. You know, he's like, well, I don't have a problem talking with her. If Miko has a problem with something I did or something, I said, she can just come to me and I can talk to her. I have no problem with it. So they go, they, they're at the house at the event. And they come in. And the girls are actually discussing what had happened the day before, do that day or a few a few weeks, few days before. And then they end up having this conversation and they were telling Miko, you you kind of you were a little rough and you, you know, you y'all need to really figure that out. So Asia told her, she said, I didn't really appreciate the conversation. It is what it is. I ain't trying to, you know, I ain't trying to be fussing and arguing. I'm not trying to do none of that. I didn't like the fact that you you know, the stuff with the kids and all. I don't like all that. And I ain't never going to sit under this whole, you don't like my husband and all this stuff. She's like, but the thing to do is we're all here so we can all have a civilized adult conversation. Your husband's here. My husband's here. We get the husbands together. We can all have a conversation and get it squashed. And it'd be, you know, it'd be that. Now, this is where the program kind of broke, broke away and we'll go back into it next week. But the last thing that we did here, Channing was like, oh, I have no problem with sitting and talking to her and her husband. And I got no problem with it. But I'm not going to sit and change what I've said or how I felt. If she was so great at her job, she'd have a job now. She hasn't had a job for over eight months. I'm not going to change that. That It is what it is. That's the old Channing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so... This was it, and you know, in her whole thing, and her confessional, I'm, she's going to have to make have her husband to apologize. But, well, baby, we already see Channing is not going to apologize to you, Miko. So, girl, again, you barking up the wrong tree, and you getting up to the fat, to the top of the tree real fast. Just the best. But that Miko is a piece of work. She's just messy, and she looked a mess at that. Um, the little over. All the girls look real, real nice, and everybody that was there was dressed. I said, seven point five million dollar house. So people was. In their Sunday best. I don't know what that dress and that hair thing. Miko had going. She looked a mess. She looked like a greyhound. Anyway, moving on. I'll actually talk to y'all again next Monday on this little situation. But I do love this show. Love this show. A mess in that old Stacy girl. Wash your hair real good, girl. Put some conditioner. You need to get all that E and J out your hair, girl. <laughs> Later.